What's up, Sifu enjoyers and practitioners, new and old, um, youthful and spry or whatever, but uh, this is Green Rider Dave, man. What's going on, guys? I, I want to talk about some things, some observations I've maybe developed over time that I've seen at the highest level of this game. And so I kind of want to present them to people who aspire to do, let's say, no-hit runs on Master, or maybe they want to dabble in Grandmaster or get really comfortable with unlimited threats, stronger enemies, things like that. So this video is for you guys, man. Uh, you know, maybe intermediate or higher level, maybe advanced or whatever. Let's get into it. So the first thing I want to get into is what I like to call directional attacking. So if you see here, we have our list of strings, AKA combos. We have five lights. We have a light light plus a heavy. Sometimes I'll refer to these as one and two, one for light, two for heavy. And this is how that looks. We have a guy right in front of us. This is what, you know, two lights and a heavy looks like. So if, if you would just turn around, sir. Well, directional attack attacking dictates that you can apply any one of those attacks that are in that string to any particular enemy. For instance, let's say I do 1-1 one, one against a guy that's in front of us, but I then I use two of that string against another enemy. 1-1-2. One, one, or I go, you know, 1-1-2, one, one, one to one guy, one to the other guy, and then two to someone else. So one, one, two. That's the same string as what we just saw here, but with directional attacking applied. Most people kind of do this just by chance, you know, because you're trying to deal with multiple enemies. Let's also show you that you can apply those directions, that directional attacking logic applies for the unlockable skill attacks, such as crotch punch, Snap kick, sweep. And this is something I actually didn't know for the first, I don't know, anywhere between five and six months of me playing this game. I thought you had to stay true to four four light to get your crotch punch. And then you had the, you know, four four light and you just kind of hit whoever you hit. Well, it turns out you have more control than that. For instance, if I wanted to hit the guy to my right who's technically behind the main character, I would then do right right light see and to hit this other guy it's left left light and then if I want to hit the guy in front of me then yeah up here and if there's someone behind me then it would be back back light you have control to hit very specific enemies granted it it is you know it's tied to where the camera's pointed but also where the MC is looking will determine what comes out so for instance even though I'm Let's say, you know, I, the camera is pointing forward, and if I want to use a crotch punch against the guy that's up top of the screen, I can just use forward forward light to hit the guy, but I will get reverse crotch punch because the main character is looking at someone else. So yes, the camera will dictate where which direction the attack will have to be pointed towards, but sometimes you won't get the base attack and you might get a reverse attack based on where the main character is looking. But yeah, this is directional attacking. Next, I'm going to talk about how you apply directional attacking with buffering that attack when you're anticipating that you will be attacked yourself. So I'm going to make these guys aggressive. I'm going to do my best to showcase what I'm talking about. Forgive me if I get hit. Uh, this is going to be in an instructional manner. Not necessarily the way that I normally play, so. Dodge him. See the directional attacking? I'm anticipating that guy, and then using Crotch Punch. You see? Bam! That was one, one on one guy, and then the two on someone else. That was... it's hard to explain what that was, but basically I ended on Heavy 4, I believe but anticipated the guy was going to hit me, or try to hit me. Boom, see? Anticipation. And when I say I'm buffering these attacks, Sifu has a surprisingly 
uh, favorable window for you to buffer attacks. So, for instance, this is a crotch punch normally, but you can press for you know forward forward light. You see how delayed that was? So much time you have to get that. So while you're hitting someone else, you can buffer well in advance when you're anticipating that someone's creeping up on you and stuff like that. For those who are unaware, there's a fighting game term called low profiling, which is basically when you counter a high attack with a low attack, especially one that then stuns the opponent who did the high attack. So let's see if we can get some of that going off here. As a matter of fact, let me let me switch it to one guy. Yeah, let's make him aggressive. So you see how we went under his attack there? To counter his high attack? That's called low profiling. At least in fighting game terms. I don't know if there should be a different term for Sifu, but I find that this is the one that best works for the, even this game. I also want to make a quick note that you don't need an enemy to try and attack you for you to anticipate. Um, most grunts are not inherently blocking, and they're not inherently ready to parry or avoid at a moment's notice. Don't wait for them to come at you. You can bring the fight to them, subdue them, create space. When you're surrounded by grunts, like, you want to be as aggressive as possible. So lastly, I want to talk about other moves that low profile, such as... Duck Strike. Reverse Sweep, as you saw there. Reverse crotch punch. Here. Ugh, I keep trying to hit this guy with reverse sweep, but they keep uh Oh my god, they keep <laughs> they keep going over it. If anything, that just further proves that it lows profiles, but it's, I just think it's really funny. Here we go. That's a, that would have low profile that that action. There you go, reverse crotch punch again. So, without trying to flex your show off, I'm going to do my very best to try and put everything I talked about in motion here. I'm going to be anticipatory, I'm going to buffer my attacks and try to deal with this first wave of Night Call. What the fuck you doing in here, pal? And there you have it, man. That's uh, hopefully a good example of, you know, directional attacking, anticipating when enemies are going to attack, using low profiling moves to then stun those enemies, and therefore just overall kicking ass. If you just get used to doing those things and approaching fights that way, you will play Sifu like a grandmaster. You will do things that people do at the highest level of this game, and you'll be able to, you know, potentially go for no hit runs do no hit on Grandmaster difficulty, get comfortable with Grandmaster, you know, the elements that create Grandmaster, such as stronger enemies and unlimited threats, um, buffering, anticipation, low profiling, those things are going to be your friends. So, thank you so much for sitting through the first part of this series. I'm going to do at least three or four more of these, talking about other things we haven't really talked about how to do with, you know, mini-bosses. Uh, we didn't necessarily talk about having a plan, which is something that all players do do at this level um you know we haven't talked about we can talk through combos and 
how to apply them in tense situations with enemies surrounding you. So those are other things I really look forward to getting into. I appreciate everyone checking this out. And yeah, man, this was how to play like a grandmaster with screenwriter Dave. Hey, achieve Wuda, Sifu out.